Getting a bad cab driver off the road can be just a phone call away. In fact, the city receives thousands of complaints every year. We just want to get your response on some of the complaints that were filed against you. Afzali agreed to meet with the I-team downtown in a public space, but then changed his mind and ran into a random cab. Really quickly, Mr. Afzali, a couple of quick questions about your complaints. Google, Google please. Jason Knowles from the ABC7 I-team. How are you? Good to see you. We are rolling right now. The owner, Jack Shaw disputes the claims. He declined a scheduled sit-down interview, so we showed up at his office. When calls went unanswered, I stopped by the church before Taylor's meeting. Jason Knowles from the ABC 7i team. How are you? Says me. We wanted to talk to you about transglobal development. Mm -hmm. what Your about company. What? Well, some people say that they've given you earnest money, no, and no, they never no. got the home. No, you're talking to the wrong man. That ain't me. You're Otis, right? No. Yeah, you are. Mr. Taylor. Off camera, he admitted he is Taylor. Do you have security guard Any companies right now? None whatsoever. You happy about that? How many did you have? I want to talk so bad, and you know I do. That's you why can you do whatever you want. No, I can't. I got to listen to the lawyer, the judge, all that stuff. On the phone, owner Rochelle Salufo said she didn't want to talk to the I-team on camera, so we tracked her down at her daughter's salon in Crete. Can they get their money I can back? give it to you. No, they can't get their money back. They, they ordered non or bought non-refundable gift certificate. Heisel never responded to our calls, but we saw him on his porch with a case of beer. Hi, Mr. Heisel. Jason Knowles from the ABC 7i team. Can we ask you a couple questions? No. Nope. Did you leave people with unfinished basements? You can get off my property, too. We remained off his property, but still had questions. Did you or did you not take money from those people? Did you finish the work? Cheryl, airbag recalls involving millions of vehicles have caused repair backlogs. One woman turned to the I-team after her airbags exploded while she was driving. She says she wasn't getting the settlement she wanted until the I-team stepped in. I was getting nowhere by myself. Mary Wissawadi is driving her 2003 Jeep Liberty again. She got $2,700 in repairs and a rental car while she waited three weeks. She says all covered by Chrysler. And look at this check for $10,000. I think it was the pressure that you put on them. Before the I-team became involved, she says Chrysler was offering her $8,000 for the Jeep with these deployed airbags. Because I went through such problems with the car and my injuries, and I just felt it wasn't enough. Both airbags suddenly exploded as she was driving 35 miles an hour. All of a sudden, my airbag just pops and all of this smoke comes out. She admits that she continued to drive despite this airbag safety recall notice, but says she had no other way to get to work and that area dealerships didn't have parts. Fiat Chrysler acknowledged the delays, noted the engineering challenges of making parts available, and said parts were available for all customers in December. But that was almost three months after Wissawadi's incident. And I'm not really afraid to drive it now. And the I-team got results for Minor Esquivel when his extended warranty didn't cover a faulty airbag. Nissan stood behind its airbag exclusion. This, as Nissan is also recalling millions of vehicles to correct a potential airbag manufacturing defect. Esquivel's specific make, model, and year is not part of the recall. But weeks ago, a Nissan spokesperson sent the I-team this email saying Nissan has reevaluated his circumstances and is willing to pay for the cost of the repair. An estimated value of $4,500. If someone has a problem, they should contact the I-team. It does get results for you. Chrysler has no further comment on Wissawadi's resolution. You should check with your mechanic to see if you have any outstanding recalls. And if a dealership is waiting on parts, you should ask the manufacturer for a car rental. But there are no laws requiring that they provide one. We do have some links on our website to help you if you have this issue. Go to abc7chicago.com. Well, Kathy, it's been a problem for 30 years now. We brought a hidden camera into four major retailers to see what they would tell us about blinds with cords and buying those blinds for a home with young children. This, as the chairman of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, is making it his mission to stop a blind danger. And I found my son hanging on the pull cord. Peggy Miller takes us back to the day her life changed forever. The blinds now gone from her children's bedroom in Kenosha. Where's his color? He won't answer me. I got him down. I 
call 911. One of her three sons, five-year-old Jonathan, died here in 2012, strangled in the blind's cords. And you never would have thought that the cords on blinds would have killed your child? Absolutely not. Those are the kind of things you don't think about. I have no memory whatsoever of the event. This Nebraska teen was a lucky survivor. His mother was videotaping her children in 2002. Then this terrifying moment, her son choking on the blind's cords. My son, he, he choked himself. It's always unsettling to me, seeing me in the background there. All blinds have warning labels, but the I-team found some sales clerks may not know how serious the danger is. At a Northwest Indiana Lowe's, the clerk first offered us both blinds with cords and cordless blinds for a child's room. This is what the clerk said only after we expressed concerns about the cords. And is that what you would recommend for a kid's room, mm -hmm. the yeah. cordless? At a nearby Walmart and Home Depot, they suggested we raise the cords. Like instead of like, you know, cutting it or something, just tie it up higher, make a knot, and you can still use it. All right, thank That's you. That's my best suggestion. Always take the core, and you can, you can hang it higher so they can't get to it. They didn't offer the cordless option until our producer asked. Those companies all told us they're increasing efforts to educate consumers and sales associates. They also have plans to phase out corded blinds by 2018. These are all cordless. This Target was only selling cordless blinds. Target and Ikea recently announced they would stop selling blinds with cords. The Consumer Product Safety Commission's chairman says he's been meeting with retailers and making it his mission to get cords off all store shelves. There's also this 2014 CPSC petition seeking the removal of all accessible cords from window coverings. These incidents occur mostly in the rooms that parents think are the safest. The CPSC says since 1996, there have been almost 1,600 children under five treated for injuries and estimates that nearly one child per month dies from window blind cords. The Window Cover Manufacturers Association disputes that one death a month figure, saying that numbers have steadily been declining in recent years. The industry has also made changes since ABC 7's Kathy Brock reported on the issue in 1994. Manufacturers created breakaway cords and started offering devices to hang cords. But the CPSC says it hasn't been enough. Our staff has already proven it doesn't save lives. The only way to save lives is to get rid of the accessible cords, period. But the manufacturers say more than half of blinds are still corded because they are cheaper and there is still a demand. They say wiping those off the market would cost jobs and devastate the industry. But Peggy Miller believes cordless blinds would have prevented her tragedy. He's here with us, even though he's not physically here, but he's still with you. Yes, absolutely. The industry representing blind manufacturers said it works closely with the CPSC to reduce risks and that current U.S. standards are the most stringent in the world. They also say they fund a public education program, but they admit that cordless blinds or ones with inaccessible cords should be used in homes with children. ABC News and Brian Ross will have more on this investigation starting tomorrow on Good Morning America. There will also be a full report on Nightline tomorrow night, Ron. Kathy, an important issue for families Hard and to children. believe we're still talking about this 20 years after we first did 20, that story. 20, 30 years later, too. 20 years since you did the story. Okay. Ron, curb stoning is a term used to describe unlicensed car dealers. Many times the vehicles they sell can wind up being lemons. Tonight, the I-Team is showing you how these rogue car dealers and the property owners who help them can face violations. Do you have anything to say about the possible citation? Cannot do that. You cannot do that. That man who works at this mobile gas station in the Little Village neighborhood kicked the I team out of his store as we followed along with city investigators. They do not have the proper license uh, with the state or with the city of Chicago. The city's business affairs and consumer protection department handing out violations. They say this gas station illegally had two cars for sale on its business property. So is your car is your friend's car? No, no, it's my car. It's my friend pick up for me. The city says he's not the business owner. Over the phone, the owner wouldn't give us a comment about the two citations. The BACP and the Secretary of State's office call it curb stoning. Authorities say they are cars illegally being sold at gas stations, restaurants, and parking lots, and they many times wind up being clunkers or have rolled back odometers or they're stolen. <laughs> 
and two cars for sale at the La Roqueta restaurant, which now faces two different citations. Do you have the proper license to sell those cars? Those, those cars are not mine. But do you have the license to have the cars here? No comment. And then the mother load. Investigators say at least a dozen or more vehicles here on this warehouse lot near 48th in California, illegally being sold. This is not a licensed dealership. Yeah, this is not a licensed dealership. The BACP says it issued cease and desist orders to the warehouse property owners for not having the proper licenses to sell cars. This man says he's just a tenant. Not the owner. I'm not selling cars. Experts say you can spot a potential curb stoner by searching phone numbers from Craigslist ads. You can see if their number comes back to a high number of vehicles. In the state of Illinois, unlicensed private sellers can't sell more than four cars a year. Do you know that your number is actually connected to eight different cars for sale right now? Are you curb stoning? City investigators say they will also try to find all of the vehicle owners. They, too, may face violations. Court dates for the property owners who were already cited are scheduled for mid-June. And by the way, the owners of that warehouse never responded to our calls. All right, very good work, Jason. Ron, you could be a victim and not even know it. Rogue car dealers may look real, but they don't have the proper license. That means they could sell you a clunker and then disappear. They're easy to find clusters of vehicles with four sale signs at gas stations, restaurants, fenced off parking lots, and on the curb. It's illegal to have a for sale sign in your vehicle in the city of Chicago, whether it's on a street or whether you're talking about curb stoning on a private property. It's known as curb stoning, a term which comes from the age old act of selling items by the stone of the curb. Car dealers who don't go through the licensing process and have no established place of business. They basically fly under the radar. Licensed used car dealers like George Matrovsky and Anthony Kessel say curb stoning cuts into their sales and hurts the consumer. When you're buying the car off the street, you have no protection. The curb stoners change their phone numbers every week. You never know what you're going to get. They turn back the odometer in these vehicles. They're actually salvaged and they hide any kind of mention of that. There are people who doctor titles. The I-Team found two curbstone vehicles you'd want to avoid. According to Carfax and AutoCheck reports, they both potentially have rolled back odometers. One was being advertised as having 96,000 miles, but according to the reports, has 145,000. If you have a problem, you'll never find them. But you can figure out who they may be before you buy. We copied phone numbers from private seller ads on Craigslist and then pasted them in the search engine. Dozens of vehicle ads were connected to each individual phone number. And that's a huge red flag. That's a big red flag. We responded to one ad. The car was located at this gas station on the city's southwest side. Do you know that your number is actually connected to eight different cars for sale right now? Illinois law says unlicensed private sellers can't sell more more than four cars a year. Are you a licensed dealer? Can you tell us anything about your operation and how you sell cars? No. Where do you keep the cars? Do you keep them here? Here's another car with the same number on it for sale in the gas station lot. The city says the commercial use of space for selling a vehicle is not allowed unless you're a licensed dealer. Do you know that's illegal to sell cars here? Well, I, like I, said, I, don't, I don't sell cars, so... Well, who's selling the cars here? I don't know nobody who's selling cars, man. But watch this. One, two, three, four cars, all for sale, quickly moved. Jason Olds, maybe seven, I... If you're buying a vehicle from a private seller, the Better Business Bureau says you should have it checked out by an independent mechanic. Make sure the name on the title matches their license and run the VIN history on sites like AutoCheck and Carfax. Why would a guy on the street want to sell you a car for $2,000 less than what it's worth? In the last two years, the Secretary of State's office has arrested about three dozen people and recovered four stolen vehicles. In 2012, Alderman Ed Burke asked for a citywide crackdown, resulting in almost 100 citations. Tomorrow on ABC7 Eyewitness News at 5, we will show you a recent curb stoning sting executed by Chicago's consumer investigators. It is estimated that millions of dollars in sales tax revenue are lost, all due to curb stoning. It is quite a case. The suspect faces 15 
15 counts of felony identity theft. The charges were filed after an I-Team investigation into allegations that the cab driver used customer debit and credit cards to go on spending sprees. We caught up with him today after his arraignment. Did you steal your passenger's debit cards? 51-year-old Omar Azamgar wrapped a scarf around his face and pulled down his hat, trying to hide from the I-Team and my questions. What do you have to say to those passengers who trusted you? City investigators at the Business Affairs and Consumer Protection Department and police say Azamgar ran an elaborate scheme, allegedly taking some passengers' credit and debit cards, saying he needed them to make an imprint of the card because his machine in the back seat was broken. Then he'd allegedly give back that imprint and a similar card, which was in someone else's name. I got no comment. No comment? Why not? You must have something to say to your passengers. Police say it happened to Joe Tosh when $400 went missing from his checking account. He realized that the card he was given back belonged to Cody Estel. The debit card was a debit card that I had lost last October by giving it to a cab driver who handed me back a different card. But at the time, it looks the same. After we started asking questions, investigators at BACP asked Tosh to give them his card imprint. They and Chicago police detectives say they used it along with the exact amount of the fare and the time of Tosh's ride to track down Azamgar. Why are you hiding from me, sir? Why can't you take off your scarf? Azamgar's attorney wasn't present at the arraignment, so the judge continued the case until Monday. Since the suspect is from Morocco, the judge asked that he bring his passport at his next court appearance. Police told the I-team when he was caught, he had about 50 cards in his possession. Ron and Kathy were also told that there were 16 alleged victims.